<laughs> How many know you can have fun in the house of God? Amen. Hallelujah. You know the Apostle Paul was into sports? He talks about running the race. I mean, he was a guy that he loved to get out there and he liked to take and watch the, uh, you know, the Olympics at that time and everything. And he said, but understand this right here. Of all the tryouts and all the trials and everything else, there's only one that can win the gold medal. Amen. And how many know we are that one that can win the gold medal? Amen. Amen. That's with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so as we are here this morning, I want to take just a moment if I can. Bear with me real quick here. Amen. All right. Praise God. It was so, several years back, amen, that I had been praying and asking God. I said, I said, God, what is the true warrior of the kingdom? What is the true warrior? We understand that in the branch of service I was in, that there were many that wanted to get into the special forces. They wanted the Green Beret. They wanted to be able to be the best of the best. But as the song says, a hundred will test today. Only three will win the Green Beret. It was that hard. And so being as I was able and I was honored to be a part of that group, amen, I asked God, I said, in the, in the body of Christ, I said, what is it uh, that we need to, uh, what confession is it that we need to stand as those heavenly champions, amen, those uh, aggressive assault soldiers of the kingdom that we can make a difference in the society that we live in? Many times there will be many believers that will never witness, they'll never take and see another soul saved. There will be many believers that will never anoint somebody with oil, pray the prayer of faith over them, see them heal. There will be many believers that will never know what it's like, amen, to cast demons out in the name of Jesus Christ and then to give him all the glory. Amen. But we understand this right here, that it was at such a, a uh, it was at such a man force of training that even Jesus said this. He said, where two or more are gathered together in my name. He said, there I am in their midst. Why would he say that? Because there comes times that people flee. There comes times that depression separates. There comes time that anger annihilates and they begin to leave. But there's always that few that are well-trained, that are discipled, that can stand, amen, in the midst of adversity. They can look at a fallen brother and lift him up and restore him. They can look at a fallen sister. They can lift her up and restore her. These are the ones that they, they don't enter into gossip and they don't enter into trying to take and dictate, uh, you know, the service. These are the ones that stand up and say, you know what? I serve a commander in chief who is Jesus Christ. His orders, amen, are given unto me. And when I come back, mine is not to ask why, but to do or die. And so in this right here, God gave me, amen, he gave me a confession of the true soldier of the cross. Each year I would put down what year it was, so for 2024. I've decided that as a soldier of Christ in the year 2024, I don't have to be petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. You see, New York and Washington, D.C. has just shown me that no force sent from hell can destroy me. For I'm a true soldier of the cross. Yes, I will bow to the commander of life. His order shall be my desire. I will step up to the call of prayer. For I know that the effective fervent prayer of a righteous soldier of the kingdom of God availeth much. Yes, as a soldier of the cross in the American, no one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, or lure me to complete my task. Amen. For you see, I have completed all my training classes. I studied to show myself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. As a soldier of the kingdom, I do not have to prove, scream, or debate my orders, for they have been proven over and over. I have decided that as a special aggressive assault soldier of the cross, an American, I'm not a whim, a washout, a recycler, or a fake. I have proven myself in battle. I will stand in my place. Once again, in the raging battle of spiritual and physical terrorist attacks on this nation, and the body of Christ as a soldier. As a soldier, I will assault the enemy and salute Jesus as my king, king of kings and lord of lords. 
Yes, he's a piece of my valley, the bright, star, uh, bright morning star of my life. He's the one who has never lost a battle, obeying his orders, praising his name, building his kingdom that will come. As a soldier of the kingdom of heaven, I will uphold the hands of this nation, this nation's leadership. My pastor and all fivefold ministers rejoice as they march forward to the sound beat of God's word, singing, God bless America. As a true soldier of the kingdom of heaven, no one has to send me flowers, gifts, food, candy, or even handouts. I don't need to be cuddled, cradled, cared for, or catered to. Why? I'm committed to God in this great nation. Yes, one nation under God, with liberty and just for all. As a soldier of the kingdom of heaven, I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around or keep me down. For the world states that a just man or a just one may fall seven times, but they will arise. As a special force of soldier of the kingdom, I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. As a special forces aggressive assault soldier and citizen of this nation, and I, I cannot lose enough to cause me to turn back or quit, for I shall endure to the end. Amen. I have decided that I am a red-hot, blood-bought, Bible-thumping, devil-chasing, faith-believing child of God who walks on the waters of time, trouble speaks to the mountains of opposition, and will see them move out of my life. When Jesus drafted me into the greatest army of this time, I had nothing. If I end up with nothing, I still will come out ahead. Yes, I will win, for I count all things but as done that I might win Christ Jesus. My commander has and will continue to supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. As a soldier of Christ and, and as an American, I've been trained to be more than a conqueror. You see, I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I will always triumph knowing that if God is for me, who can be against me? No terrors can destroy my joy, dignity, or peace. As a kingdom conquering soldier, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is found in Philippians 4.13. Devils and terrors cannot defeat me, for my commander-in-chief gave me the power over the entire enemy. That's found in Luke uh, chapter 10, verse 19. People cannot disillusion me, for if my God is for me, somebody tell me who or what can be against me. Weather cannot worry me, for I will walk on the waves of trouble and calm the winds of tribulation. According to Isaiah 53, 5, sickness cannot stop me, scare me, or depress me. For I know that by his stripes I am healed. Battles cannot beat me. For Isaiah 59, verse 19 states that when the enemy comes in like a flood, his spirit shall raise up a standard. My standard is so high that money cannot buy me, for I am a faithful tither and offering giver. Governments, both domestic and foreign, cannot silence me, for I am too hot for hell to handle. I have decided that as a soldier of the kingdom, death cannot destroy me, for I know that to be absent in the body is to be present with Christ. When my commander-in-chief calls me home from this battlefield of life, he will promote me to captain and will allow me to ride and rule with him. As a soldier in God's army, I'm marching to the sound beat of his word, his non-failing word, with a shout of victory echoing from my lips. I am claiming victory, not defeat. I will not give up, turn around, or bow down to this world, for I'm marching to the cadence of heaven. Yes, I am heaven bound. Here I stand. Will you stand with me? Remember this army is a full-time army fighting the ones that would try to steal, kill, and destroy. Arise as soldiers who serve the Lord faithfully and are on duty 24-7. Call on the name of Jesus. He will enlist you. Call on the name of Jesus. He will empower you. Call on the name of Jesus. And one day you will see the victory is outlined in his word that says in the end we win. Give God glory and give him praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I read this quite often. Because I believe that we need, amen, we need our ears to hear, amen, the word that is spoken. I don't know about you, but I'm one that when I read something, I read it out loud. I want to hear it, and I want to speak it, amen, because in doing this right here, it gets down into my knower. How many know that your knowers, you know that you know that you know, 
Amen. And so I believe that in the spiritual realm, God is enlisting, amen, ones that want to go deeper, ones that want to take and, and stand longer, ones that don't mind, amen, the, the, the onslaught of the enemy out there because they know that the enemy, amen, the enemy can never take and go further than your desire. It can never go further than your decisions. And so today, as far as for me and my house here for whosoever will, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. As we get ready to go into the Word of God this morning, uh, I'm excited, amen, about going into the book of Isaiah chapter 58. The reason I'm doing that is because we are right now, uh, we're looking over this nation. We're taking a broad view over this nation from coast to coast. We're looking from state to state, from city to city. We're looking from family to family. And what we are seeing is there's a great debate that has taken place. And in this debate right here, we're, we're seeing where we have to make a decision. And that decision is going to affect each and every one of us. When's the last time that you looked at the gas pump and said, whew, it's come down just a little bit, you know? I, I, I don't feel so bad pumping it right now. Amen. If you raise something high enough and then you bring it down a little bit, everybody's happy, even though they're still paying more. But the reason I'm saying this is you can always find something, amen, to celebrate. You can always find something, amen, that you can rejoice in. Don't walk around always negative. Don't walk around always upset, you know. We have to be the voice of, of cheer. We have to be the voice that says, listen, God is still involved in this nation. God is still, amen, acting on the prayers of our forefathers that stood and prayed that this would be a nation that would worship and give God glory. But as we go back to the Old Testament, I want to share with you that you're not going through anything new. You're not going through anything that humanity has not been going through before. We can take this all the way back to the Garden of Eden. We can take it all the way back to the commander-in-chief of evil was Satan himself. And he came into Adam and Eve. He wanted to steal the blessing. He wanted to steal their joy. He wanted to steal everything that God had given them. And the reason he was allowed to do it is because, amen, there was a seed of doubt. Hath God said? Yes, sir. It started there. Hath God said? Yeah. Did you really tell you you couldn't eat of that fruit? Yeah. Well, you know the reason that he said that? Because as soon as you eat it, come on, somebody. Yeah. You're going to be like God. Yes. You're going to be so smart, you're going to amaze yourself. Yes. And you know that... That question has brought that attitude into, into humanity. You're saying in this right here, you know, how many, how many remember growing up? I mean, you were the smartest teenager on the planet. You knew everything. You had the dumbest parents that ever was. They didn't know anything. But then one day you woke up and said, oh my God, I thank God I'm alive, amen? Because you know what? That old seed, that old seed of doubt, amen. it caused me, amen, to make my own decisions. Yes, sir. And you know, we all had those fields of regret, anybody here? You always had that closet you don't want to open up, amen? Come on, everybody's got some skeletons in that closet. I'm going to say something. How many got a testimony you can't give? Come on, somebody. Amen. You know better than being in church and give that testimony. It'll be, it'll be out all over Facebook, amen? Come on. It's that one that you can't tell nobody, but you can just say, thank you, God. Come on. Thank you, Lord. You, you took care of me. You brought me through it, amen? Hallelujah. And, and, and I've said this right here. I was, I, was, I was counseling this young man. He came to me, and he had this problem. And he said, after we got through, he said, I want to get up in church and give my testimony. I said, no, you don't. He said, Why? I said, no, you don't. I said, you'd be better off to go down there to the bar and tell somebody down there at the bar they understand you. Amen. I said, in church, I said, they will annihilate you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Come on, you can give your testimony today, and guess what? Next Sunday, they're like, mm hmm. Oh, you, y'all been, y'all just too safe. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 58. Stand with me this morning, amen, as, as we're going to give allegiance unto God's word this morning, amen. Verse 1. Cry aloud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. 
and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of Jacob. It says they take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, you fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as you do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul is to bow down his head as bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Question mark. Uh -huh. Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day unto the Lord? How many know he's talking about your religious rituals? Amen. Now in verse 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loosen the bands of wickedness. Hallelujah. To undo the heavy burdens. <laughs> And to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. Okay. Is it not to deal your bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that you cover him, and that you hide not yourself from thine own flesh. Then, watch this right here. Then shall your light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. Okay. And thy righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. Oh. Then shall you call, and the Lord shall answer. Oh. Thou shalt cry, yes. and he shall say, Here, Here I, am. I am. If you take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity. And if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light arise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as a noonday. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. You can be seated. When I begin to read this and I begin to, I begin to study the word that uh, prophet Isaiah was speaking, what he said was, hey, hold on, we got, we got a situation. What he was saying is God is saying there's a problem and the problem is in my house. What he was saying is religion has taken over. So therefore there's no relationship. Amen. What we do is we become so religious that we begin to point out everybody else's flaws yes, and weakness. Yes, but yet don't talk about me. We've come into the place to where society can do what they want. And we will approve of it by our voice of silence. Okay. What we do is we call a fast. And when we call a fast, it's for our own personal reasons, our own personal needs. We do not fast for this nation. We don't fast for leadership. We don't fast, amen, that God will take away that heart of anger, that God will take away that strife and that pride out of our life. What we do is we fast, but we make it a religious fast. And God says, I don't want to hear that. Because the word of God says that pride goeth before downfall and a haughty spirit before destruction. And we find out that in many of the institutions, I don't call them churches, many of the institutions today, that there is such a level of pride the devil himself doesn't want to go in there. Why is that? Because it is now the who's who that controls you know who. And when we come to that place that we no longer can be servants in the house of God, that we no longer, amen, are afflicting our soul with fasting, amen, for that which God has called us to fast for, then we see a nation that begins to turn away from God. We see children whose minds right now are being indoctrinated right now with Marxism and communism and fascism. We see all this. 
We see children today, 14 years old, even at 13 years old, they just want to kill somebody. Just wants to take an hour 15 or a nine mil, whatever, and they just want to go kill somebody. You know, I, I've seen it on games, but I want to feel it. I want to see what it's like. And many of us, we don't understand that. But yet society itself has now begun to indoctrinate a generation that has no moral standards. Do not care. There are ones today between the ages of 9 and 16 that would love to come into this place and kill every one of you. Not even so much as take a thought and go get a hamburger and fries. Why is that? Because the church, amen, we got into religion. We got out of relationship. We got to where we hardly know each other. Maybe on Sunday to greet each other. But we don't know each other's problem. We don't know how to pray for one another. Because most of the time we don't even like one another. So what we do is we come to the place where God's word says this right here. He says, listen, when's the last time that you had a heart for the homeless? Amen. When's the last time that you passed somebody out there on the street and said, get a job? I'm guilty of that. I've seen one standing out there and I thought to myself, you know what, I'd a whole lot rather have me a job, amen, and stand out on a street corner and begging for money. But then God corrected me. And what God said is, why are they out there? Why are they in this situation? He said, it's because their mindset has received the wrong information. There are many out there that right now, you can offer to buy them lunch, but they want the money. There's many out there that are thirsty and, hey, I just, need, I just need a drink. Yeah, but it's not water they want. Their mind has the wrong information. And what I begin to feel is this right here. It would be better for somebody to say, let me take you down to the restaurant and buy you, buy you a lunch. You'll find out that many times you'll be rejected. But what you can say is this right here. I want to give you the right information. I want to tell you how God took me out of being an alcoholic. Amen. And how God restored my life. I want to tell you that I could have been. I could have been on that street corner. I could have been dead. I could have been out there. But you know what? Somebody cared enough to get out of religion and create a relationship. I had a pastor that I went to see when I was in Tennessee. And then the man made such an impact on my life. I had been in many churches. But you know what? I was just a no name. Still had problems. Nobody cared. But here was one that said, you know what? I want to create a relationship. And he began to, he began to just... Hey, you want to go hunting today? We get out and go hunting. Or you want to go out and just get something to eat? He created a relationship with me. And you know what? I was able to start sharing my problems. And what I said was this right here. I don't have a problem. I have an addiction. Okay. Come on. Many today will say I have a problem. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's a problem. But it's an addiction. Yes, sir. And that addiction, amen can also go into a spiritual addiction because the more you have a worldly addiction, the less, amen, you want to be addicted to the Word of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You find out that, listen, church, church sometimes a bad scene. Sometimes you go to church, when you leave, you're just as depressed as you was when you got there. Sometimes you go to church, you can enter happy and leave mad. But let me tell you something. When you begin to submit yourself to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and you begin to say, just as I am without one plea, Amen. here I am, Jesus, it's just me. And I'm not here to be religious. I'm not here to say how much I know of the scriptures, how many I can quote you. I'm here to say, oh God, I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my family. And when you are real, God can deal. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you're real, God says we can deal now. 
When your finger pointing and say, oh God, you know the reason I'm like this is because of this over here in my past. And oh God, this happened. And when I was young, this happened. And oh God, it's their fault. And God says, you're not real yet. You're not real yet. He said, you're still pointing the finger. You're still blaming society. You're still out there playing all this. We see that happening in government today. We see that it's happening in this nation today. We're still pointing back in the 60s and back in the 70s and everything else is why it's affecting us today. And instead of moving forward and saying, this one thing that I know, amen, my past does not dictate my future. See, there's some of you that need to get out of that past right now. I've seen ones in the store I duck around on the other aisle. Because I know I'm going to be spending 40 minutes listening to the same old thing that I've heard for the last 30 years. No change. And I'm saying this right here. You cannot, amen, watch it. You cannot stay in the same failure for 40 years and expect somebody to have pity on you. It's getting tough, isn't it? It comes a time to where you got to grow up. And the word God says, church, it's time to grow up. What are you doing for the naked? What are you doing for the hungry? What are you doing in the outreach? What are you doing for those under the bridge? He said, what are you doing for the ones incarcerated in jail? What are you doing? Oh, well, you know, my time is limited. You know, God, I got so much to do, and, and you know, I'm working, you know, I'm working five days, six days a week, and, and you know, and, and, and Sunday's the only time I got to rest, and, and you know, I, I can't go to, you know, I can't go be, uh, part of, be a part of the uh, jail ministry and, and everything. God goes, you know what? He said, you're busy yourself right out of your blessings. When I was chaplain over at uh, Lampasas County Jail, that was, one of the, that was one of the brightest moments of my life. I actually got to go in and sit in the cell. They locked it behind me as I sat there with a convicted murderer. The jailer said, hey, you don't have to do this. If you're scared, I said, I ain't scared. I said, I'm going in here to create a relationship. So I went in and sat down and began to talk with the individual. He said, well, I'll tell you what happened. I said, hold it. I said, that's not for me to judge. You'll stand from the judge. I said, but I want to ask you this one question right here. Was God involved in what you did? He said, oh, no. No. I said, why did you make this decision? He said, because I choose or I chose the wrong friends. And they led me down the wrong path. I said, so in other words, you made a choice. You made a decision. And now comes a condition of it. He said, yeah. I took him in the word of God. We start, I started ministering to him. And after about 40 minutes, I took him by the hand. He prayed the sinner's prayer. And I told him, I said, listen, this doesn't mean that you're going to get a, you're going to get a free ticket. This doesn't mean you're walking out of the court saying, hey, thanks God, I'm out of here. No. It just means this right here. That God's going to take your sin and he's going to take and forgive it. He's going to wash it clean. He'll never remember it again, and he'll help you through this process. He looked at me and he said, you think so? I said, I know so. The next, that was on Tuesday. I came back on Thursday. There was another one in, that was in jail there who was an accomplice to the same crime. And both of them had the same first name, so I had to be careful there. So I went to the other one. I began to minister to him. And I said, why did you do this? I tried to help my friend. They were discarding a body. And I said, Did you, didn't you think that doing this right here, that you would be a competent to the process right here? 
No, I wasn't thinking. I said, why wouldn't you think him? Because we've been doing drugs before that. And while all this happened, he said it was just like I was in another, just another realm. And he said, but then afterwards I began to realize, and he said, now all of a sudden I, I, I thought I'm going to prison. The reason I'm sharing this is because the wrong friends, the wrong information can bring you in front of a judge. And the judge can say you're as guilty as the one that committed it. How many know that one day we will stand before the judge? Those who are saved will stand before the judge. And what he will say is this right here. Let me look and see. Mm. All I see is the blood. I don't see, I don't see your faults and failures. I, I don't see the times that, listen, you received the wrong information, but you came back and you fell on your knees and said, oh God, forgive me. I listened to the wrong one. I got mad. I left church. And Lord God, I didn't leave a church. What I did was I left a relationship. God says, I see the blood. I see the blood. I can't, I, can't, I, I can't hold you guilty on anything, you know why? Because the blood of Jesus erased your slate. And all I can say is, it's clean, case dismissed. But the evil that stands before him, that has never confessed Jesus Christ, he will look and this is what he's going to say. Because you created the greatest failure of all time. What was that? What was that? You never accepted my son, Jesus Christ. All this other, that's all can be forgiven. But to reject and die without Jesus, he said judgment has been given. And so I bring you back to the word of God. It is up to us to reach the unsaved. It is up, up to us, amen, to start investing in our teenagers. And, and, and instead of always, well, you know, they're out here in the music they listen to and all this that they're doing. Do you know that most churches today don't really have anything for youth? They don't want to be, they, they just don't want to mess with them. You know why? Because they're all out there acting like you did when you were a teenager. How well I know. Amen. When I was a teenager, they didn't want me either. But you know why? Because I wanted to feel wanted. Anybody here? When you were a teenager, you want to feel wanted. So the friends that you chose were just the ones that you felt the closest to. And they usually weren't ones in church. Y'all yes, yeah. look so saved. Uh -huh. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> All right. So we ask this question, how do we change America? How do we get the family back together? How do we get the family that prays together stays together? There was a family that was, it was on the news and uh, I was watching this. And they were interviewing the, the mom and dad and they said, the, the kids, I mean, were so focused and the daughter had a lemonade stand and the young boy was out there mowing yards and helping. He was helping Woodards and, and uh, you know, their husbands had died and everything and he's out mowing yards and, 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 and free. He doesn't charge. He's just out mowing yards. And they said, how, how come your kids are not on their phone right here and, and got their earbuds in and jamming, doing all this right here? And he said, because... He said, we gave them the right information. He said, my children were not allowed to have a smartphone that teaches them stupid stuff, dumb stuff. He said, when we sit down at the table, we sit down as a family. Dad's not in the recliner, mom's on the couch, and Junior and them are in there eating some other place. If they want to talk to each other, they text each other right there in the same house. He said, no, uh -uh. He said, we have a family. Amen. And you know what? 
They came back and they had re-interviewed them again. It was like six months later. And this is what they found out. That they were introducing this same thing to other families, to other husbands and wives. And they were, they were practicing the same thing. And the kids were being involved. And now all of a sudden dad is out there with his son. Mom is helping the daughter, teaching her stuff around the house and how to cook and how to be, how to take and be that woman in the house and everything else. And they're having a great, exciting time. When's the last time that we saw that? Because we're busy. How many times in church do we not even support what God is doing in the church? Because we have missions, amen? And that mission requires that we corporately come together, amen? And that we accomplish this, but we find out that many times it's a handful. It's a handful that are going to accomplish the whole mission. You know why? As one old wise man said, everybody wants to be a chief. Nobody wants to be a brave. Everybody wants to be the boss. Nobody wants to be bossed. And so with that right there, we miss out on so many blessings that God has. And God says, listen, I want to tell you something. You can be religious all you want. I won't bless that. You can fast and, oh God, I hope you'll, uh, in this fast right here, straighten my wife out. Oh God. Straighten my church out. Straighten the pastor out. Oh God. Uh, and God goes, No. How about me straightening you out? Amen. How about me changing your attitude? See, many times a husband wants to change his wife. The wife wants to change her husband. Instead of saying, help me to change, amen, because I need some change in my life. My wife asked me one time, she said, why do you have to be so bossy? I said, honey, I said, it's like this. I'm the drill sergeant, you're the private. Let me tell you something, I got so hungry. My clothes weren't being fixed. I came back in and I told her, I said, all right, drill sergeant, I'm the private. Man, I ate good that night. Because you know, I said, God changed me. She said, everything you want done, you want it done like that fast. And I said, for over 20 years, that's the way I was. No excuses. Excuses are nothing but simple phrases for failure. Write that down. <laughs> excuses are nothing but simple phrases for failure. If you have a pocket full of excuses, no wonder you're walking in failure. You have no way to blame but yourself. Yes, so get over it. Yes, get over it. Reprogram. Yep. Get back in the Word of God. Yes, Get back to creating relationships. Stop destroying relationships. Stop thinking you're the only one on this planet. God has to stop everything He's doing. Just, amen, so that He can talk to you. On, it's time to have a little walk, a little talk with Jesus. Amen. It's time to say, here I am, Lord. And man, I am messed up. Yes, sir. Here I am because I need to be changed. My attitude. I need you to take some pride out of my life. Now, one thing I won't do is pray for patience. I will not pray for patience. Because the last time I prayed for patience, I ended up in the army and I ended up in Vietnam and I ended up being a drill sergeant two times. And God said, how, how, how much more patience do you want? And I, I hold myself, I said, I'm full, I'm good. I am good. And he said, no, you're not. I said, what do you mean, Lord? He said, I got something else for you. They made me a pastor. Yeah. All right, praise God. Now, watch what he says right here in verse 9. He said, this is a condition after you have received his word, after you have received, amen, what he told you. Then shall you call or shall you pray and the Lord shall answer. What is, what is hindering your prayer? What is hindering your blessing? Your attitude. What is hindering, amen, even healing in your body? Your obedience. The reason I'm saying that is because God has healed so many. And when they got their healing, they left. Oh, if I need you, I'll call you back. But until then, just go ahead and I'll put you on hold. 
had a young lady in the hospital, I've told this several times, but had a young lady in the hospital dying. And the doctor said, maybe three weeks. That's it. Get your, get your affairs in order. They called me. I didn't know her. They called me and told me that, hey, listen, she don't need to die. I said, why don't she need to die? They said, man, I'll tell you why. She'd been out here living as a biker chick. She'd been out here, all this right here, and alcoholism and everything else. And, and you know, and then said, if she died, I mean, she's going straight to hell. Her family was con uh, concerned. They're saying, we don't want her to die and go to hell. And they said, would you go see her? I said, okay. So I went and put on my leathers and everything, got on my Harley, and I rode up there. There's a bunch of bikers in the hallway. I'll come in, they're like, oh, what's going on? And I said, oh, I'll come in to see so-and-so. Oh, she's in there. And, you know, profanity and all this right here. And I said, okay, so I went in there. I walked up to where she was. I said, uh, so you want to go to hell? She looked at me and she said, no. I said, that's where you're going. She said, Really? I said, yeah. I said, the only reason you're going to hell is not because of you drinking. It's not because you're carousing. It's not because of all this right here, the drugs and everything. That's not why you're going to hell. She said, why am I going to hell? I said, because you have not asked Jesus Christ into your life. I said, give him a reason to heal you. I spent time talking to her. Tears run down her face. She said, I don't want to die. I said, if God heals you, I said, will you give testimony? Will you help others? She said, I sure will. I got out my little handy dandy all purpose oil, amen. I said, don't understand this right here. This is just oil. But I said, the action of what we're about to do is in compliance to God's word. I said, I will anoint you with oil. I will pray the prayer of faith over you. And the word of God says, if you have any sin, it shall be forgiven you. So I anointed her. I prayed over her. She just bawling, just crying. How many know sometimes you got that wall so high that when it comes down, all that's backed up just comes rushing out. It just comes on out. All the betrayal, all of this right here just comes out. And so when I got through praying with her and everything else, and, and she just had a big old smile on her face, because when I went in, she was her face was drawn. She was like, when I left, she's like, hey, you coming back? I said, yeah, I'm coming back. I said, but understand this right here. You won't be here when I get back. She said, oh, I'll die. I said, stop that. I said, no, it's because the doctors will tell you that the cancer that was in your body submitted to the blood of Jesus Christ and ran out like the coward that it is. And I was going on. And she just said, Ooh, okay. I went back up there three days later. Come on, resurrection. Amen. I went back up there three days later. And, I, and, I, and as I went up there, I'm looking. No bikers in the hallway. And everything else. Oh, you little faith. How many know what I thought? Uh, mm -hmm. So Doc came out and said, hey, Doc. So what happened, man? He goes, you're not going to believe this. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and tell me. He said, we re-ran tests, MRIs, CAT scans. We did a, a, a brain scan and everything. He said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, whoever messed with her, Got every single cell of cancer out of her. Amen. I said, Doc, Amen. the blood of Jesus. Amen. He said, I don't believe in that stuff. I said, it don't matter. No, I said, what matters is the truth is that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, she was healed. He said, she left the hospital. She got out of the, she told the bikers and everything else, y'all just go ride, do whatever you want to do. You know why? She said, because I'm not going anymore. She got out, the family came and picked her up. She hadn't been united with her family in over 20 years and came and re, was re, reunited with them. And, and they called me and they said, listen, they said, for the first time in our life, we are feeling love, we're feeling concern. And, 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 and she wants a Bible and, she, and everything else. And I said, oh, I got a Bible. Oh, no, we getting her a Bible. Amen. Listen to this. 
She lived for another 15 years. And the only reason that she only lived 15 more years was because she, she did die of something that was not cancer related. It was something totally different. All those years. And her lungs and everything had been affected by nicotine and everything else. They finally, she went in COPD, she went into emphysema. And, but what's this, they said on her dying breath, she gave God glory. She gave him praise. That's what I'm talking about. When you go, amen, and you just allow the Holy Spirit to move you, all of a sudden, amen, there is a there is just a supernatural charge. You want to just go out there and you want to pray for more. What's my target today? What's my target today? I'll get in the car. I have no place to go. I don't even know where I'm going. But this is what I say. God, what's my target today? I'll end up someplace. And there'll be somebody that's hurting. There'll be somebody that's depressed. There'll be somebody that's sick. And I have an opportunity to minister to them and to pray over them. And then when I leave, they're laughing. They have that spirit of joy. Why? Because God wants you, amen. He wants you to absent yourself from you and then fill yourself with all of him. That's what he said. That's what he said right here. Amen. And he said in verse 10, I'm hurrying. And if you draw your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall your light or your life arise in obscurity and thy light or thy darkness as the noonday. He said, you know what? Darkness always represents sickness, depression, anger, suicide, all of this right here. But he said, if you'll do what I'm telling you to do, he said, you are going to walk illuminated with the hope and the joy that is given from God. That you're going to be the light and darkness. You're going to be the hope to the hopeless. You'll be the hand that can lift one up out of the ditches of despair, the fields of agony. You'll be the one that makes a difference. And when you come back, what you're saying is this right here. I lost my depression somewhere. I don't know where it went, but I lost it. Because I began to minister to others. Church. Amen. That's what God's telling us now. Yes, sir. That's what He's telling us now. Yes. Churches are fasting. You know why many of them are fasting? Because they want to fill up the auditorium. They want a bigger church. We've got a building program coming up. Oh, we want this school for the children. And they're fasting. And God said, You're not even taking care of what you got. <laughs> yes, sir. If you can't take care of 20 or 30, how are you going to take care of uh, two or 3,000? Yes, sir. Church, the reason that many churches today are closing and dwindling, and we see many pastors that are leaving, the reason being is yes. our nation has fell to the spirit of hopelessness. We have now come to the place to where we don't feel energized spiritually, physically, emotionally, and socially to where we are the answer. Remember this, when God wants to touch somebody, he needs your hands. Amen. When God wants to give somebody a word, he needs your voice. Amen. When God wants to bring somebody out of depression, he needs your laughter. He needs your smile. He needs you to walk another mile. Yes, yes. Someone said, until you walked a mile in my shoes, you don't know who I am. Until you see me in the ditches of agony and despair, you don't know who I am. I used to tell my soldiers, I can't trust you until we've been in battle. I can't trust you until I've seen how that you stand in the face of the enemy. You can say you trust somebody, but when you're down and out, when the enemy has tried to steal your family, tried to steal your joy, tried to steal everything that you've got, who is it that will stand there with you? Who is it that will lift you up? Those are your friends. Those are relationships. And I want to say today, America is divided. Why is it divided? Because we have the godly 
And we have the ungodly. We have the churched. And we have the unchurched. We have those. That have decided it will be their way. And those that have decided it will be his way. Evil hates righteousness. Righteousness hates the author of evil. See, there's no bad people. Amen. Mm -mm. There's bad spirits. You get that spirit off of, off of your enemy, you'll have a friend. You get that spirit that's trying to control the church off of the church, you'll have a revival. It's not people. It's a spirit. Poverty is a spirit. Understand this right here. Sickness is a spirit. Jesus addressed all these spirits. It's time that the church gets back to being like Jesus. We address the spirit that is controlling the individual. That is trying to destroy your health. Trying to destroy your children. Trying to destroy everything that you've got. We've got to come against that spirit. When you're fasting. Before you fast. Write down. Isaiah chapter 58. Read it. Then say this is. Lord this is what you want me to fast for. This is what you, me, what you want me to fast for. All these homeless that we're seeing. That are laying out there in San Francisco. With needles stuck in their arms. All these that are out there. That are dying of AIDS. All these that are out there right now. That are protesting for Hamas and everything else. Understand this right here. We have to fast and pray against those spirits. Because if we don't. They are not going to leave. They're not going to go. Because they feel welcome. And pray against the leaders that make them feel welcome. Pray against the leaders that are opposed to God's will. Because if they are opposed to God's will, they're opposed to you. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. We have to start it here. There's a little match of hope that's lit. How many know that one little match can burn an entire forest fire? A force now he can burn an entire force. Last year, Texas saw hundreds of thousands of acres that were torched from one little flame. But you know, I believe a flame of the Holy Spirit that is ignited in church can bring us to that place. That listen, we can see a change in clean. We can see a change in Central Texas. We can see a change in Haiti. We can see a change in Nigeria. We can see a change in Mexico. You know why? Because the flame of the Holy Spirit is just going to begin to consume the evil minds of man. Bow your heads with me this morning. I want to ask you this question. Are you ready for training? Are you ready to become that aggressive assault warrior, the kingdom of heaven, that stands in the midst of adversity and will not lie, but stand for the value of truth? Are you that one that God can count on when the mission is so severe that he can't just trust everybody to do it, but he called you by name and he said, now it's time. Now it's time to step up. Because I'm about to move you into a place that many won't go. But you've already proved yourself faithful. Are you ready for that? Maybe some that are watching service saying right now, you're just saying, you know what? I, I'm just, I'm complacent. I'm comfortable at home. You know, I just got hurt by a church and everything else. Well, you know, it's time. Put on the whole armor of God. The reason you get hurt by people in the churches because you don't have on the breastplate of his righteousness that protects your heart. Amen. You don't have on the helmet of salvation that protects your mind against the evil thoughts of man. It is time, church, to say, I, I'm, I've been studying. I, I've been studying. I've been wanting to put it. I've been wanting to put it to use. Well, get ready. God's getting ready to call you. And he's getting ready to take you into a battle. But he said, remember this right here. The battle's not yours. Come on, the battle's not yours. He said, but the battle belongs to the Lord. But I need you to do some things.
I need you to praise me. I need you to worship me. I need you right now, like Jehoshaphat. I need you to get the dancers, the praisers, the worshipers all together. Because when you begin to praise, you begin to worship, you begin to have all the musicians. God says, I'll go before you and I'll confuse your enemy. That's going to happen right now. It's going to happen right now. We're going to see the enemy confused. We're going to see the enemy destroyed. We're going to go for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for this mighty, mighty scripture you gave us. I thank you that, Lord God, that as we search through the Bible, whether it's in the Old Testament, the New Testament, that we see that Jesus was telling us this is the way. Walk ye there in it. Now, Lord, I thank you for that. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to offer right now 30 seconds. That's all, 30 seconds. I want you, right where you're at, I just want you to open yourself up to God. I want you to allow Him to take the hurts, the failures, the depression, the anger, all the past. Just take it and say, here, you can, you can have it all. I don't want to live in that anymore. I want today, yes, to be the first day for the rest of my life. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice in it, and I will be glad. We now will rise with the voice, the voice of victory, the voice of triumph, the voice right now that says, thank you, Lord. Thank you for Saving my soul. Thank you for forgiving my past, my sins, my failures, my shortcomings. And give me a brand new start. Father, I release this today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everyone say amen and amen. Give God glory. Come on, give him glory and honor. Amen. Hallelujah. Get yourself ready. God has a target for you. Amen. To minister to somebody today. God bless you and we love you. Be back Thursday night at 7 o'clock.